Today we're going to be taking a look at the newer handheld stabilizer or an incredibly low budget steady cam. In this video I have the aluminum version of the stabilizer but there's also a carbon fiber version that's about $15 more than this one. The only real difference between the two is that the aluminum version is about half a pound heavier than the carbon fiber version. So this is about five and a half pounds, five pounds for the carbon fiber version. That's really not that significant, but it could make a difference if you're holding this uh, stabilizer with a camera on it all day long. Your arm's gonna get tired just maybe a little bit faster. Otherwise, these two stabilizers are essentially the same. This video is gonna be structured into five parts, so you can skip around and find the part you want. First, we're gonna talk about what I like about this Steadicam. Second, we'll talk about its drawbacks and what they didn't do so well. Thirdly, we'll take a look at use. How easy is it to use? How do you use it? How do you balance it? How do you set it up? all that kind of stuff. And finally, we'll answer the question of, is this a good buy? Who is it a good fit for? And who is it not a good fit for? And to start off, let's take a look at some test footage that was captured with this little guy right here. Steady Cam in 2019 and I've been able to use it on quite a number of projects now. The uh, first thing to note is the price is hard to beat. $50 American, $65 Canadian, uh, $15 more than that if you want the carbon fiber version. I remember about 10 years ago talking to the mother of one of my film students and she was asking what she should buy for her son and she wondered about a Steady Cam and it was basically this thing and at the time this a unit like this would have cost about $300, maybe $400 Canadian. Ten years ago, the idea of buying one of these for 50 bucks would have blown my mind. Filmmakers of all stripes and levels would have been drooling over this unit. Beyond the price, some of the things I like about it are that its build quality is pretty decent. You know, it's pretty robust. It's not going to break. It's not going to fall apart. There's nothing flimsy. The uh, gimbal moves very nicely. And the mechanics and operation of it are very simple. Now, I didn't say easy, note that, but very simple, very simple to understand. When you operate the unit, you just hold the handle, right? Very simple. So in one sense, especially for 50 bucks, there is a lot to like about this unit. However, like most newer brand products, while the build quality is sufficient and the operation is probably like 80, 90% of what you'd get for something that costs 10 times more, what you're not getting is a really quality engineering spec. A lot of the setup things that could save you time are a little bit finicky. They're just um, they're just not quite as easy, not quite as quick as something uh, that you would pay $300, $400 for. And the main place you're going to notice that is in the balancing of your camera head. So you've got one latch that controls the plate that goes side to side to balance the camera. If you've got a camera grip and a battery, that's going to be a different weight than if you've got a smaller camera that doesn't have a camera grip. Uh, the size of your lens is going to affect all that kind of stuff. And so you need to be able to balance this way. You can also use these bottom weights to balance that way, but it's a lot easier to use this tight plate to do that. And then you've got a front to back plate. And so that balancing can end up being a little bit tedious. Once you get used to it, you can be pretty quick, but on the fly, it can be a little bit tricky just to adjust it. Whereas a more expensive, say, glide cam, which just makes balancing quicker, easier, especially on the fly, like you zoom in, now your lens is longer, that's gonna throw off your balance. You would just turn this knob and it would move the plate backwards. Whereas on this newer, you loosen it, you adjust the plate, you tighten it, you see if the balance is right, no, not quite, you loosen it, you adjust the plate, you tighten it, no, not quite right, just that kind of process. So balancing on this newer steady cam is a little bit more work than on a glide cam. Also, these knobs, they look cool. They've got a little bubble level. But because they're <laughs> because of the way they're oriented, they're useless. If somebody can tell me in the comments what on earth you would use a bubble level for in a steady cam operation like this when it's sideways, let me know. I'm super curious. I think it's just to make it look cool, to make it look like there's a feature, but there isn't one. Uh, even I was noticing on the carbon fiber, I think they got rid of these bubble levels because they don't do anything. They don't do anything. Another thing that we noticed right away was that we tried to mount a phone on here just out of curiosity. Could I, you know, use my phone on here? And it didn't really work. Even with no weights down here, uh, the bottom of the rig, it was way too heavy for a phone camera. 
and it just didn't work. So there is actually essentially a minimum weight that you need in order to be able to get the rig to operate fully. And of course, there is a limit on how much weight you can put on this unit as well. You can't put a good big red camera on here or something. Not that you would want to, your arm would get so tired so fast. No instructions came with this at all. Maybe if you buy it with a bag combination, maybe it might come with that, but even if it doesn't, uh, on Amazon, I was noticing there's a link to some instructions on how to balance. You don't even need that. There's a hundred videos on YouTube how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to do it real quick. It's super easy. Other than that, I mean, it's a really simple unit, so there's really not too much to complain about. All right, so if you're watching this video and you're thinking about buying one of these, it probably means you haven't had a lot of experience with steady cams, just like I hadn't when I bought this unit. So what's it like to actually use it? Is it actually worth it to use it with uh, image stabilization and cameras now, all that kind of stuff? Does it actually make that big of a difference? Yes, yes it does. As you saw in the test footage, it's pretty cool what you can do with this thing as far as stabilizing things out. There is a significant difference between a mechanical gimbal like this and a motorized gimbal. You're gonna find that with a steady cam mechanical gimbal like this, you're gonna get a lot more like a flying motion, whereas a motorized gimbal is very perfect. So a steady cam like this is gonna feel more organic in its movement, more natural, and have imperfections, a little bit of sway, things like that, um, that still feel smooth, whereas a gimbal is gonna just be perfectly smooth. And there's reasons you might wanna use one or the other uh, beyond price, there's artistic reasons, storytelling reasons, but compared to handheld, this is going to be very smooth. When you're first starting, there is a steep learning curve on this. Um, you can get some okay results right out of the box, but it's going to take practice. It's going to take a fair bit of time uh, for most people to figure out how to get it to move just the way they want to. It's not a pop it out of the box and you're running and making amazing smooth shots. But you will pick it up pretty quick if you're using it on a regular basis. Balancing takes a little bit of practice uh, just to get the whole rig set and then um, using it takes some and, and how you make adjustments and things like that takes some time. So if you're using this professionally and you're going to use it on client work, um, I would practice a lot before you go use this on a client shoot just because when you're nervous and trying to get the balance right, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be a headache. It's a little bit finicky, but it's not really too big of an issue. Once you get your stuff balanced, it's pretty much gonna always stay the same. As you get practice, you'll be able to balance this thing much quicker over time as you do it more. So while setup can be a little bit tedious, it's really pretty simple. The first thing we've gotta do is attach the camera to this plate. And the first hack I have for you is I really like to get these Monfrotto uh, quick release plates these shoes and just mount them to everything. That way, if I have a shoot where I'm going from a tripod to the steady cam and then back to the tripod, I don't have to rebalance everything. I can just pop the foot out of the shoe, put it on the next thing I want and then pop it back. Saves me a lot of time. This plate will of course attach directly to your camera, but I would really recommend getting one of these at some point if you're shooting on Manfrotto tripods. This, uh, this just really saves a lot of time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just attach this shoe. So I've got my shoe attached to my plate here. I can pop that in, tighten that back on. And then I grab my camera. And this camera already has a Manfrotto uh, foot in place. So I can just slide that right on there. And then the thing I try to do is I just try to make sure that on the steady cam, I just make sure that that's flush at the back. And then I just know that whenever I mount that onto the steady cam, that that's where I want to. We'll notice that right away, right where we're upside down. And actually, the way I like to balance these is I like to make sure there's about the right amount of weight here that when this, uh, the center column can adjust, that when the center column's all the way down, that we have an upside down. Uh, setup where I can run the the camera back and forth upside down and then when I extend it all the way that we have a right side up setup and that lets me not have to adjust weights or anything like that I can really quickly adjust from going doing a headshot on someone to doing a low along the ground shot just by adjusting the center column so what you want to do is Make sure that your balance 
let's do it backwards here, is is roughly roughly balanced there. All right, so that's that's getting close. And once you get used to your camera, you're going to be able to get here much quicker. Um, right, so we've got a little bit. We're tilting a little bit to my to your left, to my right. So we're just going to move the camera over a little bit. See if that that fixes that. And then uh, front to back, we're just tilting forward a little bit. So we're just going to move move the camera back a little bit. And you want to make sure when you're doing this that your lens is set to whatever focal length you're going to be shooting at. Otherwise, when you adjust your focal length, you get a zoom lens, it's going to shift the uh, the balance of the camera. So that's pretty good. I might be, you know, in a real shoot, I might be making some more fine-tuned adjustments in that. Ideally, uh, your drop time is somewhere between one and three seconds. You kind of do a balance like that, kind of see where things are going, uh, depending on what you like the feel of and how fast of motion you're doing, things like that. The way you adjust your drop time is by adding or removing weights here and you'll get a set of weights, different sizes that you can pop onto the bottom here. These also can adjust the balance as well because there's a little groove, a little groove there that these can slide back and forth on if you wanna be adjusting the side to side balance from the bottom of the camera. Maybe if you're adding a monitor or something down here, you're gonna to need to do that, but then you should be able to kind of move your camera around like that. Now the other thing to note that when you're setting this up, you're going to want to turn off any image stabilization on your lens or in-body stabilization on your camera because the stabilization on the camera is designed to work with little micro jitters and things like that. A steady cam really messes it up and it will actually end up drifting and then kind of hit the edge of where it can go and then just jolt back and you'll actually get unstable footage if your image stabilization is on when using the steady cams. So you have to turn that off. Uh, to get good footage, or if you don't have it on your camera or on your lens, you're fine. Uh, it works out well. It, it works fine. <sighs> I don't know why I'm breathing so hard. I'm like getting excited. The other thing to note is that you are going to need autofocus on your rig because as soon as you touch the lens, you're not steady camming anymore. You've just got a heavier camera, which adds a little bit of stabilization. But if you have to constantly be adjusting here to get your to get your focus you're going to lose all the advantage of the steady cam. You, you don't want to touch this center column or the camera as much as possible. You don't want to touch them. You can make little adjustments with your fingers like this, but you don't want to touch them. So you need autofocus. Uh, with my first camera, when I was setting this up, I didn't have autofocus, which meant I had to open up my aperture as much as possible, make it as high a number as possible. So there was hardly any shallow field and then uh, set it way back. And even then I was out of focus half the time. And then I was also starting to see my death spots on my lens and all that kind of stuff. And it was causing trouble where as soon as you get autofocus, now it works really well. So you can see how I've got it set up like this. And if I want to do a, a ground shot, I just adjust that center column. And now I can run along with my camera like this and do a really low, low shot um, really quickly. And then because of this quick release plate that I've added on here, these quick release plates are like 15, um, 20 bucks. I can just pop it off, pop it onto my tripod, pop it back really quick, and I'm already, and I'm already balanced. One other trick for balancing, especially when you're just starting, is that if you get a light stand, these handles are empty, which is how you would actually attach it to a steady cam vest arm would be uh, with a, a spoke in this handle, but you can put these right on a light stand. And that, that uh, frees up your hands to adjust these knobs and get the balance right and kind of see what's going on. Well, uh, just gives, gives you both hands. So you're not worried as much about your camera falling on the floor because you can catch it. And that can make it a lot easier, especially when you're just starting out balancing rather than trying to uh, adjust it, uh, put it down every time that you're adjusting it. So if you're thinking about buying one of these newer steady cams, is it a good purchase? So if you're just starting out as a filmmaker or you are on a budget and you want to get 
your feet wet or just try out a Steadicam to see whether you would use it that much or not, this is a great purchase. I'm really happy that I bought it and it was money well spent in my mind. Now with that said, as a more professional filmmaker who's going out and doing client work, and sometimes I wanna do like more speed ramps and stuff, I'm going to be looking at upgrading this to a motorized gimbal at some point, hopefully in the near future, um, just to make my workflow a little bit uh, smoother, a little bit faster on set. Um, and because of the type of movement that I want for the types of film that I'm doing. Now for a professional that's making money on their shoots and needs a tool that's reliable and saves you time, where time is money, this tool will do it. This, this Steadicam will, will do the job, but it's not really a, a save time tool. They're, it probably is worth the extra 300 bucks, 400 bucks to buy a Ronin or a Glidecam. Uh, things that just, those little things, that save you just an extra five seconds, 10 seconds on the shoot and just remove a bit of headache. Those are worth it. I'm probably going to be upgrading this to a Ronin gimbal as well at some point, just because I want that extra uh, smoothness that comes with a mechanical gimbal, but I'll probably still keep this around because there are storytelling reasons to have one of these and, uh, and, and it does the job. And, and it actually does it pretty well. Like I said at the beginning of the video, 10 years ago, so many filmmakers would have been drooling over this, especially at 50 bucks. That's just hard to beat. It's a great filmmaking tool. If you don't have a Steadicam, you're thinking about getting one, this is uh, well worth looking into. If you have any questions about this Steadicam, please leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer every single one of them. If you have any comments, if you've owned one of these and you want to leave a comment for people who are watching the video, please do that. People find that valuable. That concludes this review. If you enjoyed this video, I would recommend watching this video next, and I would love to see you when you click that link. Until next time.